Hello, son. It's me. I've returned. The Mars needs moms. Yeah. Weird movie. Honestly, I think just weird. Like, that word alone can literally just describe everything that this movie entails. Is? Was? And we're not just talking about the strange storyline and plot of this movie. We're also going to be talking about the mocap. It kind of sets this movie in the uncanny valley throughout the entire time. And also the strange casting of Seth Green that just didn't make sense. The ridiculous amounts of effort they put into this movie only for it to bomb and turn into a visual mess. And also one of the reasons that people hated it, apparently it had sexist undertones. Also, this movie was made in 3D. And if you guys know my opinion on 3D, I think it's just a huge gimmick. I, I can't even think of any movie off the top of my head that have used 3D correctly, I guess, or with purpose. It seems like every time 3D is used, there's no purpose for it. It's just unnecessary. It's more like, hey, look at this cool thing. Oh, I'm popping out of the screen. Whoa. And a lot of times the movie suffers because it's 3D. They make terrible decisions in order to have that visual gimmick, it kind of ruins it. And for those who are unaware what mocap is, it's literally just motion capture. You know, actors wear those big suits with a bunch of balls on them and, and the facial dots on their face and do acting and then they put it into a program and then make it animated. Which is what Seth Green did for the main character, Milo, which is why he is technically casted as the main character. Honestly, motion capture is either really good or really bad. I mean, you know, we have Lord of the Rings with Gollum, which is really good, and also Smog. <laughs> I don't know if a lot of people are aware of this, but I mean, maybe I'm stupid and everybody's just aware and I'm just out of the loop. But this movie was actually based on a novel. I wasn't aware of that. And I would just like to say the novel has way more interesting character designs of the aliens or Martians. Whereas in the movie, they just made the Martians into thigh gap, dumpy characters with big eyes, which I guess for, you know, weird, horny teenagers, this would be fine. But personally, I felt this was kind of a, a missed opportunity for something more interesting and not just... Uh, uh, humans but but different this movie was produced by Robert Zemeckis and if you guys don't know who this producer is he's worked on some huge freaking movies we're talking Forrest Gump Back to the Future cast away who framed Roger Rabbit but also he's the same guy who produced the Polar Express Beowulf in Mars Needs Mom, which all of those movies have motion capture in that weird uncanny valley situation. And since we keep talking about motion capture, let's talk about the weird casting of Seth Green. And the reason I put casting in quotations is because Seth Green didn't actually voice the main character. What Seth Green did do though, was do the motion capture of the main character, Milo. But they felt that Seth Green's voice was a little bit too mature for the character. So they ended up casting a kid instead to to dub over what Seth Green already did. The kid who actually voiced the main character's name is Seth Dusky. However, you don't really see his name at the top of the casting list. Actually, you see his name way down in the bottom. I mean, honestly, I think Disney just wanted the namesake of Seth Green at the top because, I mean, we have Seth Green, we have Dan Fogler, we have Joan Cusack, and we even have Mindy Sterling. So, like, the cast is pretty good. So, obviously, for Disney, they'd be like, oh, putting an no unknown child up there is not going to look good for us. So, to say everyone was kind of a little bit disappointed when they're promoting Seth Green, and then you go there and he's not even in the movie, uh, you know, people would get upset. Oh, yeah, and on top of all of this, uh, this movie was actually responsible for losing Disney a hundred million dollars good. Fuck you, Disney. You're a piece of shit. No one likes you. But not only that, it completely shut down a studio and lost 450 people's jobs. So let's go into detail about this, shall we? So the budget for Mars Needs Moms was actually 150 million dollars with an estimated 60 million dollars in additional marketing costs, but it ended up being one of the biggest flops of all time. In 2007, Robert's company Image Movers Digital, which was, you know, the the one who created Mars Needs Mom, landed a deal with Disney where they would focus on producing uh, expensive 3D motion capture type movies. Because, you know, at that time, 3D and motion capture were like the thing of the future. Whoa, it's popping out of the screen. And two of those movies that they created was A Christmas Carol and Mars Needs Moms. Simon Wells, who was the director of this movie, was actually removed from his directing duties after this movie flopped so hard. And it did so bad that he 
literally never directed another movie. I don't know if this is because he couldn't find work because of how terrible the movie was, or maybe he just gave up and realized, man, maybe this isn't for me. And like I said before, the company Image Movers was completely shut down by Disney. Disney higher-ups saw what they considered the abomination of Mars Needs Moms before it went live and literally were just like, we're pulling the plug in this company. We are not doing this. But you know, Mars Needs Moms was already done and basically, you know, ready to be posted. So there's like, you know, screw it. We'll just throw it out there. We'll promote it, stuff like that. But you guys are never making a movie again after that shit. They ended up losing over 450 jobs and cost Disney $80 million, which again, fuck you, Disney and your pedophilic overlord. Shit. And since Image Movers was shut down, there was actually a movie that never saw the light of day that was called The Yellow Submarine, which the fact that they did all that work on Yellow Submarine and now it's all gone, that also costed Disney $96 million. And Disney literally didn't even want Mars Needs Moms to go out to the public. But again, you know, it was done. They're just like, screw it. We got a movie here, better use it. But at the same time, with all of this terrible shit happening all around them, this movie became beloved by many people. The story of a mother and son bond really connected with so many people. It pulled at the heartstrings and it made it some of people's favorite movie. I'm just saying that because a lot of people in my comments, for example, tell me all the time how Mars Needs Moms is their favorite movie. Now, personally, do I think it deserved to be that terrible of a flop? I mean, it's like, it's like a yes and no. I mean, you can never really say anyone deserves to have a flop like that except Disney. Fuck you, Disney. But kind of like what I've said in movies in the past that I've reviewed, a lot of it has to do with timing. A lot of it has to do with uh, the culture of the world at that time and also promotion. And there was actually a lot of people who were upset about, uh, again, the sexist nature of the movie. You know, there's a really big lean on the traditional wife stereotype where the wife cooks, cleans, and is the only one who actually raises the child while the father is, you know, flying to different places with his job to make money. But me personally, I don't think it was meant to look that way when they did it. It is more focused on the bond of a mother and a son. But if you keep your eyes peeled, if you keep your eyes open and, and you pay attention, you could really see why some people got upset about that. And me personally, I feel like this film is just one of those films that a, a mom shows their child and then be like, yeah, you better uh, help me out. You, you better listen to me or you're, I'm going to get uh, stolen by Martians and, and killed if you don't be good to me. You know, the classic parenting tactic of, of scaring a child with something that's fictional in order for them to uh, stay in line. But enough about that. Let's actually talk about the contents of the movie. What's inside? Let's get inside this movie deep deep inside this movie. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Are you tired of having hair on your face? And other areas. Are you tired of using other generic brand here? Razors that just aren't smooth and don't do the job right. Well, let me introduce you to Harry, the brand that gives you smooth, moisturizing comfort that'll melt that hair away. And you know me with my very full beard that I have to shave all the time. It's not patchy. I promise it's full. Just give me a month. You'll see. You'll all see. No, you're all probably sitting there just asking the big question why? Why am I watching this guy? He probably smells like shit, but I want to offer you something. A deal, perhaps. A five-blade German engineer razor cartridge. A textured and weighted handle for optimal control. Soothing and soft shave gel with aloe to refresh your face. And a convenient razor cover for your needs on the go. I'm offering all of this. Everything you see here, for a whopping $3. Heard me right, you dumb, handsome son of a bitch. It's the $13 value for a minuscule $3. Go to that description right now and you click that link and you get Harry's right now, trust me. The movie starts out with the Mars Range Road. We zoom underground and then we stumble upon. Oh, 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 what the fuck is, oh, put it back in the ground. Put that goddamn creature back in the ground right now. Then we cut to Martians talking in a Martian language, which honestly, kudos to them. I feel like a lot of movies are just like, oh, every single species knows English, which does save a lot of time and a lot of annoyance. But I mean, I appreciate that they went that route. So these Martians are just searching for a parent who could control their child. They end up stumbling upon Milo and Milo is just an annoying child. You know, he, he kicks, he screams, he gets uh, mad when he doesn't get what he wants. 
classic child. And we have mom who stays home. She does the chores. She takes care of the child while daddy is out doing business trips and is like, oh, sorry, son. The flight got delayed. Looks like I can't make it to Christmas this year. And then the stupid child doesn't eat his broccoli. What a dumb child. And then he feeds it to his what cat and kills his cat. He actually kills his cat. But obviously, this stupid child gets in trouble. And we get another classic case of a child being like, God, I wish I never had a mom at all. And then the movie's like, be careful what you wish for. So dumb idiot child Milo feels bad about being like, yeah, screw you, mom. I hate you. I wish you were, you were never my mom. And then ends up seeing her getting stolen by Martians. So he chases after her, somehow gets trapped inside of the spaceship, gets launched into space up into the Martian Mars realm. So now we meet the Martians, the thigh gap dumper people, and apparently they can't breathe on Mars, which is just kind of interesting. I, I guess they really wanted to relate that they're close to humans. But to be honest, the laws of space are kind of uh, fluid throughout this movie. You know, I feel like that's a lot of movies. Yeah, it's really hard to be scientifically accurate the entire time. So Milo's trapped in space jail for basically two seconds because some mystery man ended up helping him escape. So he falls to his death. Look, look, I don't give a shit how Mars gravity works. You know, it's not as strong. He would be dead. Right, it is a very long fall, he'd be dead. So he finds a bunch of hippie aliens in the giant garbage area, but he's lifted up by this robot and sent to a man named Gribble, who is the most annoying goddamn character in this movie. For now. I mean, don't get me wrong. Once you understand why he acts like this, who he is, it makes more sense. But personally, in this scene, at least, he is just way over the top. We get a really long-winded scene of him making movie references and being a, a quote-unquote nerd. And also, he apparently is hacked into the main system of a super advanced alien civilization, which again, if you know his story, doesn't make sense. However, I will admit, this character gradually mellows out after a while, and once you reach that point, he starts to become one of my favorite characters, personally. But initially, once he lands in the movie realm, I, I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him at all. And yeah, sure, he might be my main character, but let's be real. He's competing with Milo, okay? Like, that's not that hard to beat. So the mood in Gribble kind of shifts whenever Milo mentions his mom, and he kind of starts to act a little bit like, I don't want to talk about it. So Milo starts prying at his nipples. He's, he pinches his nipples, and then Gribble Let finally tells clear. him the truth. So the whole, like, thing of the Martians uh, is they're trying to find a mom suitable to extract her parenting juice out of their head and then put the parenting juice into a bunch of nanny bots in order to take care of their children. Apparently this happens every 25 years on Mars. They find a mom, they put their brain in nanny bots. Not really sure why they need a new mom every single year. Like couldn't they just reuse the bots from previous? I am trying to talk, Shadow. Let me out. What? Let me out, pig. Your fans want me. Yeah? Yes, have you not seen the comments? They completely adore me. Really? Yes. So now, let me out. You know, for old time's sakes. Okay, I got. I gotta get him. I gotta get him. He won't stop. Tweet, tweet, bitches. Why couldn't they just use one mom and then like reuse the brain juices throughout time? I mean, they have the technology, but I'm not going to question the authority of the thigh gap oh, Martians. And the way they do this is by using the power of the sun to disintegrate the mom. Yeah, it's starting to make less sense every time I, I keep going further with their plan. Uh, I, I gotta save my mom. Uh, but that's impossible. You can't do that. They're a super uh, species of alien, uh, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I just saved you like the conversation they have. So Gribble decides to help Milo, but in actuality, what he's really doing is just tricking him to get caught by the aliens. So then Gribble could save him and then he'll be in, in his debt and then he'll be best buds for the rest of their life. But something went wrong, conflict. So Gribble's plan obviously goes awry because he presses the wrong button. Gribble gets captured. However, Milo was actually saved by one of the Martians who just like Gribble is insanely annoying right off the bat. But gets better later because apparently this Martian learned how to speak English, but how she learned English was basically Cheech and Chong the sitcom. So she kind of just talks like a pothead, which is funny sometimes, but other times it's just like, oh, oh God, oh, 
God, no. So we get a scene of Milo trying to explain what a mom is to a Martian, and as he explains, he goes more and more in detail. A mom is someone who tucks you in. A mom is someone who, who brings you cookies in the morning. A mom is someone who loves you. Swell of sad music goes in. So Milo tries to make it back to Gribble only to find out that he was captured by the Martians. And also in the wreckage of his lab, he happens to stumble upon his old uh, Earth items. And one of those Earth items was actually a shirt. And he finds out that his name was actually George Ribble. And that's when he realizes, oh, this was the boy who was here before me. And his mom actually got disintegrated by the sun machine. Oh, yeah. Also, this part, uh, a Gribble is literally about to die by a alien firing squad to turn him into ashes. Like, what the fuck? What the hell is this? Like, again, we're talking about a super advanced alien civilization, but they just go back to the barbaric nature of a firing squad to, to kill someone on, on what they would consider death row. A little bit over the top, but all right. Also, something else that just doesn't make much sense at all. In a room, literally thousands, hundreds of thousands of thigh gap aliens everywhere, yet Milo floats down from the sky and, like, kicks the firing squad over no one like literally it, it caught everyone by surprise apparently and then key ends up helping them by throwing them an alien juice pistol so once again they fall down the trash chute and reach terminal velocity and somehow are remain unscathed god that just die so die and then they get chased down even further to an unknown area that has never been seen and apparently this area used to be the original home of the martian so we really start uh putting the pieces of the puzzle together we start discovering the secrets of the Martians because we find out that all the hairy hippie uh, Martians in the trash world are actually all of the men. They put them down there because they believe that Martian men are too lazy and too touchy. So instead of like, you know, creating a family and being parents to a child, they created these nanny bots in order to take care of the babies for them. But originally discovered by a painting on a wall, they used to be families just like humans, mom, dad, and baby. So they're all tricked by their leader to believe that this is just how the world works when in reality that's not how it works so key discovering all of this ends up helping them with a plan to save milo's mother they're gonna hijack a ship and then milo's gonna go save his mommy while they're hijacking the ship and then boom bam they're gonna take off to earth very simple plan and i would like to say there isn't much detail as to like how they're gonna pull it off with gribble's inventions which once again how the hell does gribble know all this shit have all these specific inventions just for this situation i mean gribble was left on mars when he was like, what, nine? Yet, however, he turned into a super genius with alien technology. But we're picking at dumb details right now, right? I'm, I'm being dude nitpicky, all right? I know. Oh, yeah, forgot to mention, Gribble. About to get that alien... <laughs> that alien... <laughs> gonna have sex with Key. Because Key ends up turning out to be the love interest of Gribble. Which, sure, you know, a little bit weird, but I, I feel like it makes for a good ending, not gonna lie. And also, I'm kind of glad they didn't, like force the love interest it wasn't like hey there they, they look at them look at them watch them for an entire 10 minutes of them having awkward silence and hand touching there's just a couple instances where like you know gribble got all red and nervous while key was like shoving her face in his face so i feel like a lot of movies just lay it on way too thick with the love interest where you're just like god can we just please move on i get it okay i get it this is a good balance so milo runs to save his mom before she gets disintegrated and happens to trip over over the Range Rover and fall down a crevice. And then Gribble with a jetpack, he has a jetpack, just, just I, has a jetpack now. I don't, I don't know. He ends up saving Milo just in the nick of time. And then Milo, just in the nick of time, ends up saving his mother. And then the next scene, which a lot of people consider to be, uh, you know, the most depressing scene out of this movie, which I admit it's pretty sad. So after his mom has like a scream fit, uh, uh, you know, discovering that she's on Mars. <laughs> They start running back to the ship, but before they make it back to the ship, the chancellor, I was going to call her the chancellor, the leader, whatever old lady is, he takes the gun and tries to shoot at the mom, but at the last second, Milo pushes her to the side, Milo gets tripped up, and his helmet breaks in space. There's no air in space! There's no oxygen! But since this movie follows space rules, Milo just basically just combusts and dies. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't die. His mom sacrifices herself by taking off her helmet and then putting it on Milo's head 
and then she spontaneously and we have a sad scene where he's like holding his mom and his mom's like i love you and son's like i love you too mom you're gonna die oh no just kidding come on it come on it wouldn't be a kid's movie she actually died she doesn't die because gribble big call back to 25 years ago found the old helmet that he was gonna use to save his mom in the ground so he takes out that one somehow after 25 years it's still usable puts it on on his mommy's head and and everybody's safe so keith kind of stages a little coup and tells everyone she's been lying to us this whole time we're supposed to be having sex with the men you idiots and they're all like dang you know they're kind of hot like look at those dudes over there they're kind of hot and they're like you know what you're right, Key. Let's overthrow the overlord. So they overthrow the chancellor and, uh, and you know, do the whole thing, do the whole alien dance where they raise the child together and, and, and the men and the women get together and stuff like that. Which I just want to say... I personally feel like just like this part would be considered problematic to some people, just basically implying that the only way to raise a child is you need a man and a woman. If the man's gone, women need to need to create robots to raise their child and men just become stupid. There's a whole lot of like weird undertones that I feel like you could really explore and be like, oh, they were trying to say this or oh, they were trying to say that. I don't think they were trying to say anything, but it does come off that way that they were trying to say that. But personally, I, I, who knows? Maybe they were. All I'm saying is I completely understand why some people would find some portions of this movie problematic. So how the movie ends is Gribble drops Milo and his mom off at Earth. And then Gribble's like, you know what? I think I'm going to stay on Mars because Key kind of quirky though but anyway gribbles goes back to mars and then we have like a montage of all the mars people being like oh look we can have color now we could uh talk to the men now we could be happy together and raise the children together and teaching all of them how to raise a child different stuff like that and then milo goes back home and you know he, he's a, a, a better child now but in the end it's like oh but is he a better child he takes the trash out and shoots it with the gun instead of actually taking it to the dumpster so the moral of the story is Milo sucks. He's the worst. I hate him. Okay, but genuinely, I personally thought this movie was all right. I didn't think it was, you know, the worst movie ever. I feel like it does get a pretty bad rap. But when you just boil it down to what the movie truly is about, just the bond of a mother and a son, or, you know, you could relate this to any parent and any child. It doesn't have to just be a mom and a son. But I feel like the main moral of this is, you know, like have a connection with your parents, you know, if you can. You know, maybe a lot of people can't really have a connection with their parents because some parents are just complete assholes or and some kids are complete assholes. But I think this movie was really just supposed to be lighthearted and supposed to bring a, a good message, which to be fair, a lot of people do see the problematic nature of the movie here and there. But uh, again, again. Not a bad movie. Pretty good. So thank you everyone for watching this video. If you loved this video, because I know you freaking love, you, you're dying to watch some more of my videos. Click subscribe, uh, like the video. I, dude, I feel like I, I, every time I say that, I feel like I'm talking to a child. You got to go over to the big red button and click your mouse button. You did it. You good job. You, you subscribed to me. Good, good job. Good job. Bye.